Welcome to the 45th episode of the Tertius Times podcast. Today is Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. I'm your host, Brian Wright, and today we will look at another news report on jihadi aggression in the Sahel. For the interview segment, I continue to speak with Pastor Wally, who begins his discussion on how COVID has impacted himself and human rights abuses around the world. This is the eighth day since 17 missionaries were kidnapped in Haiti. The missions organization, Christian Aid Ministries, has no further update on the status of their missionaries. Continue to pray for their protection and safe return. There is an email address included in the description to send messages to the victims' families for their encouragement. If you are or will be in the Washington, D.C. area on Wednesday, October 27th, you are invited to attend the China Forum 2021. As the website states, the goal of the China Forum is to help Americans understand the nature of the People's Republic of China, the Chinese Communist Party, and key issues in U.S.-China relations. Between 2015 and 2020, Islamic jihadi attacks orchestrated by ISIS and al-Qaeda militias, quote, increased eightfold, unquote, in the Sahel region, the north-central swath of Africa stretching from the Atlantic coast across to the Indian Ocean, as French soldiers who kept, quote, some levels of peace, unquote, began withdrawing from the area and are now being occupied by jihadi groups, according to Islamist Expansion in Sahel Threatens Christians. October 22, 2021, Mission Network News, quote, tribal tensions, fewer natural resources, and rising extremism create a perfect storm of instability in the Sahel. Islamists use this chaos, unquote, including weak and limited governments, corruption, poverty, and ethnic tensions, as well as, quote, jihadist infighting, unquote, particularly in West Africa, where civilians, mainly Christians, their churches, and other religious minorities, including other Muslims, suffer the most from the violence. There are approximately 5,000 French troops stationed along the Sahel, but 2,000 of them will be withdrawing by early next year. Pray for the Sahel region of Africa, that those who live there are protected from the violence of those seeking destruction. Pray especially for the Christians there, that they would also be protected and strengthened by the Spirit. Pray that they would be a light in the darkness. Pray for the jihadis, that they may discover the forgiveness, grace, and mercy of the one true God, and cease their vengeance against their fellow human beings. Pray for the countries of this region, that their leaders may have the strength and resources to wisely and effectively protect their people. And now let's rejoin the interview with Pastor Wally. Previously, he told us of his life and how he found his way, led by God, to Saudi Arabia and his life as a missionary in the heart of the Middle East, as well as his life in ministry after the expulsion from the Saudi Kingdom. Today, he begins his discussion on how COVID has impacted himself and human rights abuses around the world. Welcome. This is uh, Pastor Wally. We've been having uh, very encouraging, delightful conversations with him, learning about his experiences, his insights into various topics, mostly on persecution around the world. And now, because we are in the midst of a pandemic, obviously one of the questions is how has that affected just in general human rights abuses, uh, more specifically uh, Christian persecution, and then we'll get to his advice on how uh, we can become supportive or, or ways to be actively engaged in supporting our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. So, Pastor Wally, has COVID, has it had, rather, any uh, impact on, again, these issues of human rights, freedom of conscience, and religious uh, persecution? Well, that's a wonderful that's really a good question, uh, Brian. It's a tough one to answer, but I must say that uh, with the advent of uh, COVID, you know, um, there are many in the world of persecution that are not really aware of the threats of COVID. Wow. You know, and that's the simple truth because they are just so immersed and soaked into this daily persecution they're experiencing mm. that even when they get sick they don't look at it as covid they just see it as you know as a sickness that's normal that happens to anyone right 
They're just yeah, trying to survive. They're just trying to survive, you know, and you're correct in saying that. Um, and so it's really not really, COVID has not really had an effect on persecution. Although I must also say that there have been a few reports of those Christians in those countries that have been affected. And yet they don't count this as the real threat. To them, the real threat are the persecutors, you know. Right, right. Uh, unlike to us here, we have highlighted, you know, the COVID so much. And some of them are just, they just frown at it and just kind of like, ah, no, that's really not our issue here. So, but to a person like me, I have a taste, I've had persecution. I was abducted, I was tortured as a prisoner. I was sentenced to death. I went through a lot of pain and suffering. And I thought that was it, you know. Uh, back in America, I have had several close encounters with threats to my life coming from Islamic fanatics. But the Lord has uh, protected me and rescued me. Mm -hmm. So I'm still around to this day to the glory of God. But when it comes to COVID, you know, I was not, you know, excused. I, I sometime in uh, June of last year, you know, I acquired, I was infected by the COVID. Mm. It came through another pastor. He was actually one of my assistant pastors who passed it on to me. He was not even aware he had it. Mm. Uh, I'm not aware that I had it, but I stayed home for a few weeks trying to recover, you know, like home self-medication. But then um, I got worse. And when I got worse, it was now COVID was really the news all over, you know, the threat was all over the place. People, there was already lockdowns, you know, right. here in, in our country. So, um, so my wife became very concerned because I was so sick. Right. Very frail, and I was losing weight so quickly. Mm. So she rushed me to emergency personally. She took me to emergency. And the moment she dropped me off, I was separated from her, and she did not see me again. They declared me guilty. You know, I was said that they told me I was I had COVID. I was immediately isolated. People that saw me inside the room were all on their PPEs. You know. Protected right. head to foot. I could not see people just like that. They, the nurses, the doctors, they don't even come two at a time. They only enter one at a time, you know, and they were mm. very, all, they're all covered. I was right. treated like a really terrible case. We'll leave the interview there and pick it up again tomorrow, where Pastor Wally will continue to share his thoughts on how COVID has impacted himself and human rights abuses around the world. Continue to pray for the 17 missionaries kidnapped eight days ago in Haiti, especially for their protection and safe return. As I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, if you are or will be in the Washington, D.C. area on Wednesday, October 27th, you are invited to attend the China Forum 2021. Again, as the website states, the goal of the China Forum is to help Americans understand the nature of the People's Republic of China, the Chinese Communist Party, and key issues in U.S.-China relations. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found the information and interview presented here useful and that it encouraged you to pray for these people in areas of concern and perhaps even inspires you to take positive steps of involvement to alleviate the suffering of so many around the globe. Continue to pray for those mentioned today as you are led. Finally, pray with me that God's peace eternally beyond our comprehension guard the lives of all those who follow Christ and flow outward to bring that peace to all the world.